and the Ogun state government has stepped down COVID-19 tests as a mandatory requirement for returning students in the exit uh, class of senior secondary schools in the state. Governor Dakwa Biodo announced the reversal in a statement in Abelkota on Friday. The government had on Sunday, through Ronke Shiombo, special assistant to the governor on education, directed schools in the state to reopen for students in the SS3 classes on Tuesday. It had also insisted that the returning students ran COVID-19 tests before being admitted into the schools. Governor Dakwa Biodo on Monday, however, reversed the decision and stepped down the COVID-19 test as a mandatory requirement for the returning of students. The governor noted that the state had the highest highest number of secondary schools in the country with a total number of 5,340 and 500 boarding students in private and public schools respectively. Joining us is Remy Hassan, a special advisor on media and public communications to the governor of Ogun State. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me this morning. The latest is that the Ogun State government has rescinded its plan on the compulsory 25,000 Naira COVID-19 and malaria test for private uh, uh, final year students. Um, can you tell us more on the rationale behind what appears to be bowing to pressure from protesting parents and other senior citizens in the state, including Olusegun Obasanjo? All right, thank you very much once again. Uh, I need to put quite a lot of things in proper perspective because your, your reports are uh, as you have Captured uh, in this bulletin and not uh, detailed as it were. Uh, to start with, the uh, test has never been mandatory for all students. Uh, these students, for example, who constitute up to about 90% of the returning students, are not supposed, uh, neither were they mandated to take the test. Rather, at the point of entry, they should be screened with thermometer to be sure that their temperature is uh, within the allowable range uh, to have access to the school. And at the same time, they'll be provided with face masks, uh, facilities for hand washing uh, and soap, uh, also uh, provision of hand sanitizers. That's for these students. However, for uh, students who reside in boarding facilities, you will agree with me that their stay in the school goes beyond the classroom. And they are going to further go into the uh, hostel facilities and mingle with each other. So in the thinking of the state, uh, we thought it wise that they should be tested so that they are ascertained uh, to be negative uh, by an NCDC accredited lab. And with yeah. that, uh, they can freely mingle with each other while still observing all the necessary uh, protocol of COVID-19. So the test wasn't meant for everybody. It was actually meant for boarding students, just so that safety is guaranteed. However, uh, I will not uh, take it away from us that we dropped the ball in our communication line with the various schools. Because when the state government was to take a decision as to how the test should run, we have our own data as a government of how many of our students are in our boarding facilities, 500. Uh, but the private schools were not willing to supply that data at that time, uh, probably because they felt it would be used as basis for taxation against them. Uh, that non-disclosure did not put the government in the right perspective of how much will it even cost us to test yeah. everybody since we don't even have the details All right. now, now what that you've, you've number about, um, we're going to test. Yeah, now you've spoken about the, you know, the testing. I, I want to now ask, since the directive has been reversed, is the non-compulsory test directive, is it, you know, an invitation to possible risk of, you know, resuming parents? Um, and also, you know, is there a possibility of the state government paying for the tests? What we have done effectively now is to take it upon ourselves as a state because the uh, private schools owner have finally supplied the data that we need, which you put today, over 5,000 boarding students. And that number now, at least we are confident that it is not too high a figure that the state can cope with paying for those tests. So the state government will test all those students in boarding facilities free of charge. When we didn't know the figure we were testing, that was when we proposed a 50% discount. Now that we know the figure, because it has now finally been supplied, then 
as a state, we have decided that we will test. We are not throwing away the testing because for us, we have done yeoman's job in this COVID-19 management. And this resumption couldn't make a mess of all of the good job the governor has done. And that's the essence why when that details were not supplied, the proposal of a 50% came up. Now that the details are here and we can cope, then we're going ahead to do the test free of charge. Okay, brilliant. Is the Ogun State challenge, you know, from what we've described, uh, would you see this as a signpost of the challenges different states and, federal, and the federal government also is likely to face with the resumption of exams across the country? It is not impossible, most especially with boarding students. And anybody, any state government, any responsible government who seeks to have schools reopen, especially those in boarding facilities, cannot run away from doing this test. It just won't work. That will be endangering the lives of both the students and their parents because those students will still go back home to meet their parents. Okay, and um, um, it's a good thing. I think you've already stated that the tests are going to be free. Um, and so um, students are welcome back to school. Um, I, I want to get your quick thoughts on what next um, um, with regards healthcare in Ogun State. Um, now that, you know, it seems like we might be, you know, seeing the end and the flattening of the curve with regards to COVID-19. Um, what next, you know, do you think the Ogun State government must put in place in Ogun State um, to ensure that it is ready um, for a situation like this again in the future? Now, uh, pre-COVID, we had a plan. COVID has actually made some of those plans to become what will become of a rapid implementation. And one of it is a rejig of our primary healthcare system. Uh, as at the last time we had done uh, a total revitalization and revamping of 20 primary healthcare centers. Our target is 512 before the end of this tenure. And all of the plans we have are now becoming much more urgent because the moment you fail in the foundation, which is the primary healthcare system, every other healthcare approach That's at secondary an and tertiary level will be a non-starter. And COVID has actually made us realize that we didn't get it wrong having that plan, but now we have to more than ever before make it much of a quick delivery for our people. And that is on. 20 delivered, and the next phase we're looking at about 100 uh, before uh, the end of the year. And of course, the following year, again, with all other approaches that we have, maybe another 200. And at the end of the first term, we should have done the 512 primary health care facilities we have in the state. Brilliant. Thank you so much for um, speaking with us this morning and, of course, clarifying um, the Ogun State Government's position with regards to uh, compulsory testing uh, before uh, schools fully resume. Uh, Remy Hassan, uh, SA to the Governor of Ogun State, thank you so much once again. And thank you for having me.